Good morning, everybody, and how are you guys doing today? Hope you're having a nice sunny Thursday. It's a little bit warmer and sunnier compared to yesterday. All right, so today is Thursday. What are we going to do today? So first up, we are going to start with some grammar, as you can see here on the board. So you already learned this on Monday, but we're going to do some review of indefinite versus definite articles. And for our second class, we are going to be doing a review on friendship idioms, or these might be new idioms to you, actually. So we're going to do friendship idioms and a little activity, a fun activity on age. And finally, for our final lesson, it's going to be a listening exercise about how friends can make you live longer. Ooh. Okay, guys, so if you are in the classroom today, please feel free to say hello, just so I know who's here. All right, guys, so let's get started. Um, I didn't get my table set up properly ahead of time. I apologize. I'm going to work on that now. If you like, please do feel free to bring out this chart here. I'm going to be following kind of a similar explanation to this chart. So you might find this useful as a reference. All right. So let's see. No article. And then we have indefinite articles. And we have, of course, Definite articles. Definite article. All right. So, what is an indefinite article? Do you guys remember an indefinite article? So, what do you think that means? No article, pretty obvious. That means there is no article at the beginning. Indefinite, what do we put before a noun? So, for example, I'm going to put just apples here. And for indefinite article, what do I put before, let's say we got apple. And somebody wrote an apple. Good. So, indefinite article is a or an. This is indefinite. So, because we're going to put an apple. Why are we putting an? Can anyone tell me why? Why not a apple? Why are we putting an n? Any thoughts? If you, know, if you are watching this live, please do type in your responses to me. If you're watching this as a recording, I still would like you to try and guess, okay? Okay, somebody has told me that because a is a vowel. Very good. Excellent. So, whenever we have A, E, I, O, U at the beginning of a noun, we're going to put an, A, N. Everything else, like B, C, D, F, G, we're going to put a. So, for example, a puppy. My favorite things, a puppy. Okay. Now, what is a definite article? So let's say, for example, I'm going to put apple again. What is a definite article? So this is a puppy. I'm sorry, this is an apple. So there is an apple on the table. Then I took an apple and ate it. I took definite article is. Somebody said the. Excellent. The apple. So, definite article is the. All right. So, now that we remember what articles are exactly, let's go over the rules together. Okay. So, I'm going to grab my notes here, my handy dandy notes. Okay. So, first, let's go over um, what we are going to do when we have no article. So I think let, we will go through this first. Okay, so when are we not using an article in front of a noun? So 
If you remember any notes, if you remember anything when to not use an article, please do type it out. If you don't remember, that's totally fine. I am going to give you a quick rundown, quick-ish rundown on how to do this. Okay, so we don't use an article. So when we are talking about things in general, so we're talking about things in general. So for example, if we are talking about puppies in general, so I could say, I like puppies, not a puppy, not the puppy, just all puppies, all, pe all puppies in general, I like them. So we don't need an article. So let me just say, I like puppies. Okay, so this is very general. We're not talking about one specific puppy or a specific set, just all puppies in the world. Okay, and what else? Um, when we are talking about sports and games, talking about sports, and games. So, for example, mm, do you like to play baseball? Do you like baseball? We don't say, do you like the baseball? Uh -uh. That is not quite correct. Do you like baseball? Do you like baseball? And then you can respond with, yes, I like baseball, or no, I don't like baseball. So don't use an article in front of sports, okay? And what else? Um, we don't use an article before the names of countries or cities. The names of countries or cities. So, for example, I live in Vancouver, Canada. Vancouver, Canada. We don't say I live in the Vancouver, the Canada. No way. So, in front of cities and in front of countries, pretty much we almost never use an article. Except there are a few countries that do use um, a definite article in front of them. We'll get to that later though. But for the most part, except for like three or five countries, do not put an article in front. Okie doke. All right, what else? Before the names of a language. So before the names of languages. So, for example, I can't speak Spanish. I can't speak Spanish. We don't say the Spanish. We say I can't speak Spanish. All right. And what else? Okay. So there are a lot. There's a lot of rules for this. I'm going to put down one more rule. Then I'm going to have to erase this, unfortunately. What else? Uh, before, before meals, usually before meals, before meals. So we do, she don't say the breakfast, the lunch, the dinner. So maybe we say, let's eat dinner. We don't say let's eat the dinner. Let's eat dinner. I'm hungry. Okay. Do we have any questions so far? If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to go over them. Okay, so now unfortunately um, I'm running out of space. I'm going to have to erase a little bit of this. Take a picture if you like. Go ahead. But I'm going to erase the first, like the top two sentences. Okay, so got rid of that. Um, before nouns, so we don't put an article before a noun and number. So what does that mean? So typically it's talking about room numbers. So for example, I live in 
room 208. So I don't say the room 208. So I live in room 208 in my building. So I live in a condo and this is my fake room, not my real room. And I think there is one more. Okay, here is an important rule. Typically, not always, but we don't use an article before non-count nouns. So what is a non-count noun? Can you give me an example? Non-count, uncountables. Um, so if you are here, please type out an example of a non-count noun. You got one? I'll give you one. For example, water. We don't count water. We don't say one water, two waters, three waters. Eh -eh. We just say water. Rice. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Rice. Anything else? Bread, absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. Yeah, so usually we don't say, I drink the water, I like the bread, or I, need, I ate a rice. We don't say that. Okay, so these are the general rules for no article. Now, let's move on to using uh, indefinite article. So, when do we talk about indefinite articles? So we talk about indefinite articles. So when we are talking about non-specific things. So what does that mean? So basically, maybe for example, I want a new car. This is actually true. I want a new car. Okay, so this is not a specific car. It could be like any car in the world. Like, I just want a new car. And when else do we use uh, indefinite articles? So when we introduce, when we introduce a subject, for the first time, for the first time. So for example, I was walking on my way to work today and I saw the cutest puppy. Oops, no, that is not a good example, sorry. I saw, so I shouldn't use superlative, that's for here. Okay, I saw a very cute puppy. I saw a very cute puppy. Okay, so when we introduce a subject for the first time. So, if I keep talking about this puppy, my next sentence is going to be a definite article. So, we're gonna move over to definite articles just for a second. So, when, so we use the definite article when a subject has already been introduced. Okay, so this connects directly to this sentence. So when we first introduced a subject, today on the way to work, I saw a very cute puppy. And then, when a subject has already been introduced, the puppy, the puppy was white and black. So, because we introduced, we know the puppy we're talking about now. So, so, from now on, we are always going to say the puppy. So, once we use a puppy, that's it. No more. From now on, the puppy. Okie doke. All right, um, just one more rule I want to clarify here. Um, so indefinite articles. This is used in front of countable 
nouns only. Okay, so only in front of countable nouns, we are going to use indefinite articles. Can you guys give me a couple of examples of uncountable nouns? Sorry, countable nouns, sorry, countable. Things you can count. For example, puppies, that's obviously a countable noun. Can you think of another? Okay, somebody said apples, thank you. Yeah, going back up to this example here. Apples, what else? People, absolutely. One person, two people, three people. People, they are indeed countable. Okay, that's fine, we don't need any more examples. Thank you guys. Okay, so let's move on to our definite articles. Now, so basically we use this when both speakers know the subject. So here, both speakers know the subject already. We already talked about the puppy. Um, this is also used used when the noun or the subject is unique. So that means the only one. So for example, the sun. We only have one sun, so we call it the sun. So I might tell you, don't look directly into the sun, because it hurts if you do that. Good advice, I learned the hard way. I think we all learned the hard way. So don't look directly into the sun. There is only one sun in our universe or in our world. So we're talking about the sun, the one and only. All right, so I'm gonna write down that other, I'm gonna write down that other rule. So when both, speakers know the subject, know the subject being talked about, being talked about. So let's say for example, I'm going to ask you, hey, are you going to the soccer game? Are you going to watch the soccer match? So we both know there's a soccer match. Are you going to watch the soccer match? Now, I know before I said don't put an article in front of sports, but if we're talking about soccer games or soccer matches, baseball matches, we can put an article in front of it because matches are actually countable. Okay, so I think those are most of the rules. There might be one, actually there's a couple more rules, sorry. Okay, one or two more rules. Now, this is a special rule. This can be used in front of specific, specific, Non-count nouns. Okay, so this might sound a little bit funny. So for example, food. That is a non-count noun. So for example, I love food. I love to eat food. Now, if we're talking about a specific sort of food, so let's say for example, we are going, we're looking for a restaurant and we find a restaurant. Maybe you ask me, How's the food at that restaurant? Oh, the food at that restaurant is really delicious. So we're talking about one type of food. So the food at that restaurant, that restaurant is really delicious, really good. Okay. And I think there are a few good examples, or maybe there are not some examples, sorry. Okay, so, so for non, if you're talking about a specific non-count noun, you can put the in front of it. 
Another example, gasoline. When you want to put gas in your car, you don't count gasoline. Gasoline is uncountable. But maybe I'm, I'm looking for some gas for my car and I go to a gas station. I look at the gasoline prices. <gasps> it's expensive. The gasoline at that gas station is expensive. So I'm talking about one specific set of gasoline at one store. Okay, so I hope this is clear, guys. Again, if you're in the live class and you have any questions, do feel free to ask me, okay? All right, so I'm gonna move aside and I'll let you take a picture because um, I am going to probably erase the board because we don't have enough room. Okay, hopefully you got your pictures taken and I am going to erase some of the board. I'm gonna erase the bottom half, okay. So, hopefully we don't need this again. Actually, I'll just erase the whole thing because it's gonna get too confusing otherwise. It's gonna get messy. Okay, so now, Let's get this out of the way. Man, I did a lot of writing. Sorry if that went on for a little bit too long. That was about 20 minutes, not too awful, I guess. Okay, so now that we're done that. Okay, there's a few little things I want to ask you guys. Okay, so maybe you learned about this already. Maybe you didn't. There are a few countries where you can use the. So here is my question for you. Which countries can you use the? Use a definite article in front of. Okay, so there are three specific countries I'm thinking of. I believe there are more though. So if you put in some different countries, that's totally fine. But yeah, there's quite, there's a few countries. It's not very many. Most countries you don't put an article in front of, but there's three or four or five where you do put an article in front of it. So if you know the answer, you can type it out. Please do type it out. Let me know. If you only know one, that's totally okay. Don't worry. Just type out, if you only know one country that uses the in front of it, please let me know anyway. I guess technically it's a capital T, uh, the. So let me know. Go ahead, guys. I'm just going to take a sip of water in the meantime. Mm. There we go. Uh, what do we think? Some countries that have a definite article in front of them. What could they be? Woo! Okay, I got one person who's giving me an answer. They said the United States. Absolutely, the United States of America. So, or sometimes we just call it the USA. So yeah, typically in Canada, it's common for us to say the USA, the US or America. Very rarely do we say this whole thing out loud. Now, there's a few other I'm, others I'm thinking of. One of them's over, the one of them, there's two over in the Europe area, in the European continent. And there's one more in Southeast Asia that I'm thinking of too. Do you guys know? All right, somebody said the United Kingdom. Excellent, the United Kingdom. Or we also call it the UK for short. So this includes England, Scotland, Wales, and North Ireland. So that's the United Kingdom. And there's one more in Europe. And there's one in Southeast Asia I'm thinking of. Let's see if anyone gets it. 
Any ideas? Oh, good. Someone said the Philippines. Yes, that was the one I was hoping for. So the Philippines. I think that's two L's. Yes. So that's the set of islands in uh, Southeast Asia. And there's one more from Europe. Don't worry if you don't have know the name. Um, the answer I was looking for here is the Netherlands. The Netherlands. All right. So these are the main countries I'm thinking of that use definite articles. There are more. I just can't think of them at the moment. If you can think of them, feel free to type them out. You don't have to, though. Okay. All right. So let's get rid of this. Oh my goodness, my pen just rolled into the garbage. How funny is that? Okay, and I just drew some black pen on myself. Not cool. Okay, let me see. Is there anything else I want to go over? Actually, okay. Um, let me think. Okay, let's move on to this exercise. So this exercise here, we are going to practice um, using the article the. All right. So here you have to either put in a definite article, so put in the, or you leave it blank. All right. So we'll start. This one's a little bit easier than the other sheet because we're only working with definite articles. Okay. You guys ready? So let's do this. Let's do number one. Blank money doesn't always lead to blank happiness. Okay, so are we going to put an article, a definite article? So I'll put the instructions up here. Put the in the blank. Or leave it empty. Okay, so are we going to put the in any of these or are we not going to put the in the blanks? What do you guys think? The money doesn't always lead to the happiness, or money doesn't always lead to happiness, or the money doesn't always lead to happiness, money doesn't always lead to the happiness. All right, so remember, are these countable or uncountable nouns? Do we put an article in front of uncountable nouns? Yes or no? What do you guys think? No, that's right. We don't put an article in front of these. So that means we're going to leave these blank. Money is uncountable. We don't say one money, two money. So we're not going to put anything in here. Oh, okay. Um, maybe this was supposed to roll into the garbage for a good reason. My blue pen is dead. Hold on a second. Let me just grab a new one. If there is one. And there is. Excellent. Okay. Let's try that again. So, that's right. We do not have to put any articles. Money doesn't always lead to happiness. This is a very common saying in English, actually. Um, maybe I should put it under here. New words. Money doesn't always lead to happiness. So basically, it means, I think it's fairly obvious, but you can't, like money will not make you happy. It might make you a little happier, but you probably need things like, you know, friends, families, or fun hobbies to make you truly happy. Okay, so that was number one. Let's do, let's do number two. All right. Finals will be played in O2 Arena. All right. So, are we going to put an article or no article? 
What do you guys think? Finals will be played in O2 Arena. The finals will be played in the O2 Arena. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a hint. So these finals, this is like, uh, it could be a soccer game or a baseball game. Um, now, this is something that the speakers know about. Maybe this is a big event that everybody knows about. O2 Arena, this is a location that everyone knows about. So it's, think of it as a facility or a building in the city. Okay, so are we going to put the or no the? Let me know in the comments, guys. Tell me what you think. And someone has said, yes, we are going to put the. So the finals will be played in the O2 arena. Okay, so this is a rule I forgot to go over earlier, sorry. But in cities, when we're talking about buildings or facilities, usually, not always, but usually we put the in front of it. So the hospital, the park, the library. So I'm going to the library to study. Uh, my mom is in the hospital because she broke her leg. I need, I'm going to watch the basketball game at the stadium. So most, not all, most buildings or facilities will have an article before them. Okie doke. All right, let's do uh, number three. This might be a bit of a tricky one. Okay. So blank, more you eat, blank, fatter you'll get. I guess, yeah, it's kind of obvious. All right, so this is, this is kind of a saying, um, but this is a particular grammar pattern we use in English quite often. You guys might know the answer. It's a bit of a trick question. So I know it's on, technically it seems uncountable, but it's a bit of a different rule here. See if you guys can figure out what the correct English is. More you eat, fatter you get. Or the more you eat, the fatter you'll get. What do you guys think is the answer? Tell me in the comments. Don't be shy. Any thoughts? Okay, somebody has tried. They said the. Yeah, that's right. The more you eat, the fatter you'll get. Very good. So this is kind of an exception. Again, this is a very, this is kind of a common grammar pattern we use. So the more you blank, the blanker you'll, and then here we have a verb. So the more, and then here is also a verb. And then usually here it's an adjective. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do a couple of examples. The more you, the more you run, the, the more tired. Okay, so not always ER. So some adjectives we have to put more at the, before the adjective. So the more tired you'll be. Let's think of another example. The more you study, the more you study, the smarter you'll get or the smarter you'll be. So basically, it, this whole sentence means if you do something, this will happen. All right, so hopefully you guys, th this is just a little quick grammar introduction. This is not our focus, so don't worry too much if you don't get this 100%. Okay, now let's get rid of this. And let's do number, let's do number four. 
Okay, number four. Blank aluminum is made from, uh, I can't say this, I'm sorry, bauxite, I think. I hope that's the correct way to pronounce it. These are elements, so we usually don't have to worry about pronunciation, especially for this. All right, so are we going to say the aluminum is made from the bauxite or aluminum is made from bauxite? What do you guys think? Article or no article? Here's a hint. Are these countable nouns or are they uncountable nouns? What do you think? Do we say one aluminum, two aluminums, three aluminums? No, not quite. Aluminum is like a type of steel or metal, by the way. Some water bottles are made of aluminum. So what do you guys think? Article or no article? And somebody has responded, no article. That is correct. Very good. Thank you. No article. Aluminum is made from bauxite. Why? Because they are uncountable nouns. Okay. Uh, let's, me, let's do number seven. Let's skip ahead to number seven. Number seven. Blank moon travels around blank earth. All right. So are we going to say moon travels around earth or the moon travels around the earth? What do you think? Are we going to put an article or no article? So here's a hint. There is only one moon and one earth. These are unique nouns. So do they need an article or no article? Tell me the answer if you can. While I get some more water. Okay. So someone said the moon goes, travels around the earth. And that is correct. Good. The moon travels around the earth because there is one moon, one earth. They are unique nouns. Okay. Um, let's do, let's do a few more, like one or two more. All right. So we'll get rid of this. Uh, okay, and what number shall we do next? Um, okay, let's do, mm, let's do number 13. I think this is going to be a good one. Mount Everest is the highest peak on Earth. So let's see if you guys can get this. This is a bit of a trick question. This one's going to be kind of hard. Let's see if you get it. So yes to articles or no to articles? Tell me your answers if you can. Any thoughts? So I didn't go over this today, but I think Alan went over this with you guys on Monday and I will go over it tomorrow. Geographical places. So in front of mountains, do we usually use an article or not in front of mountains? Yes, that's right. So there is no article for Mount Everest. So Mount Everest is the highest peak on do we use an article here or not? What do you guys think? It's a tricky one. So here, I know I told you before, like in our last example, the moon travels around the earth, but typically we don't put an article when we use the preposition on. So, for example, let me think of another example. I'm a human. I live on earth. 
Um, what is the fastest animal on earth? Where is the hottest place on earth? So especially thinking about superlatives. So if you're talking about superlatives, like Mount Everest, highest peak on earth. So try not to put an article if you have on and you're talking about superlatives. Very specific rule, I know. Okay, we're gonna put this away for now and let's do a little bit more practice for the last 10 minutes before we have a break. Okay, this one's gonna be trickier. Here, you're gonna have to choose, are you going to use a definite article, indefinite article, or no article? So you have a lot more choices now. All right, so here are your choices. Put the, a, or an, or leave empty. Okay guys, you ready? Let's do number, let's do number one. Number one. Kate has been talking to blank customer who has just come into shop. All right. So what are what articles are we going to use here? What do you guys think? Kate has been talking to customer who has just come into shop. Okay, so let's pretend you work with Kate and maybe the boss comes in, he's like, oh, where's Kate? And then you explain, oh, Kate has been talking to mm, customer who has just come into mm, shop. All right. So do we know this customer or is this the first time we're talking about the customer? I want you to think, is this the first time we're introducing the customer or not? And shop, do we both know this shop? Pretend we're working together in this shop. So we both probably know the shop, right? So what articles are we going to use here? So type in your answers if you can. Okay, we have some answers coming in. We have a and the. So Kate has been talking to a customer. This is the first time we've seen this customer. We've been introduced to them. Kate has been talking to a customer who has just come into the shop. We work at the shop. We know the shop. So we can use a definite article. Good. Nice stuff, guys. Okay, all right, let's do number three. Okay, I think number three is a good one. She went to blank zoo, but she didn't see monkeys there. She hates blank monkeys. Okay, this could be a bit of a tricky one. Now, so we're in a city and we're going to a facility. One facility that everyone in the city knows about. So what article do you think we're going to say here? She went to mm, zoo. So remember, when we're in a city and we talk about facilities, what articles do we usually use? So type in your answers now. Okay, somebody said she went to the zoo. Good. Yeah, she went to the zoo, but she didn't see monkeys there. Okay, so here we have the zoo. Woo! So, I don't know, here are the elephants. And then here are the monkeys. So, in the zoo, I should write down zoo, we got some very specific monkeys. So are we going to use an article or no article? 
What do you guys think? She went to the zoo, but she didn't see monkeys. So what do you think? Definite article, indefinite, or no article? Okay, got an answer. Very good. We use a definite article. She didn't see the monkeys. She's talking about these monkeys at the zoo. Not just any monkeys, the monkeys at the zoo. So she went to the zoo, but she didn't see the monkeys there because she hates monkeys. So are we going to put an article? What do you think? So here's my hint. She doesn't just hate these monkeys. She hates all monkeys in the world. So she hates all monkeys in general. So if we're talking about things in general, do we use an article or no article? What do you guys think? Okay, I got an answer and no article. That is correct. Very good. So she went to the zoo, but she didn't see the monkeys because she hates monkeys, like all monkeys in general. She hates them. Okay, now what shall we do? Let's do number four. I think number four will be a good one. Okay, number four. You won't like that restaurant because Mm, food isn't very good there, so it's not delicious. So, you won't like that restaurant. Now, food, countable or uncountable? That's right, it is uncountable. So, but this is an exception. We're talking about a certain restaurant, one restaurant and its food. Apparently, it's not delicious. So, are we going to use an article or no article? What do you guys think? So, type in your answers now if you can. And we have an answer. Someone said, the food. Excellent. So, you won't like that restaurant. The food at the restaurant is not good good. So we're talking about one specific group of food at one restaurant. So we use a definite article. Okay, I think we have time for one or two more. Then that's going to be the end of our grammar practice for the day. So let's see. Okay, let's do, let's do number 10. So statistics say that women, blank women, live longer than blank men. Okay, so are we going to put an article in front of these? Okay, so women, this is plural, this is plural. So we are not going to put an indefinite article, that's for sure. Now because we're talking about women and men in general, that means we are going to put no article. That is correct. Good. So statistics, statistics show that women live longer than men because we're talking about just women in general in the world and men in general in the world. Okay guys, so we are at the end of our class now. We're gonna take a 10 minute break and then we're gonna do idioms. See you after the break, bye.
Hi guys and welcome back to class. Hope you had a good break there, relaxed a little bit. I had a banana, powered myself up for class number two. Okay, so like I said earlier today, we are going to be focusing on some idioms and expressions about friendship because that is the theme of this week. You've got a friend in me. That's the, that's the name of this week's theme, correct? Yes, I think so. Good, good. Okay, so again, if you're here in the classroom, feel free to say hello so I know who is watching. All right, so I would like you guys to pretty, pretty please pull out this here sheet about idioms and expressions about friendship. All right, so as you know, English is full of idioms and expressions. Now we have a lot here to get through. I don't think we're going to go through all of this because there is another activity that would be nice to get through today as well. So let's start off with number one. No, number one, sorry, slurring my words again, a very bad habit to get to, oh dear. Okay. This is where my caffeine less mornings are starting to catch up with me to get to know someone. Okay. So what does that mean? So basically at the start of a friendship or a relationship. So basically you are beginning to know someone. So, you know, at the beginning, obviously you're going to be like, hi, hey, hi, I'm Melanie. I'm Bob. Nice to meet you. So that is getting to know someone. It's the very start, the beginning of something. Okay. So for example, last week in class, I got to know a few students such as Jiyun and Hayate. So I'll write that down. Last week in class at GC, I got to know Jiyun and Hayate. Hayate. All right. I know Maria and Daisuke were also in my class, but I've known Maria and Daisuke for quite a while. So I wouldn't say get to know. Um, last week it was Jiyun and Hayate because it was the first time I met them. So I got to know Jiyun and Hayate. All right. Now let's move on to idiom number two. To get on well with. Okay. So when you get on well with someone, maybe you have the same, like you have similar interests and you really like each other. Now this can happen, this can happen at the beginning of a relationship too. So as you get to know someone, you might discover that you get on well with them. To get on well with. Okay. So let me think of another example sentence. Um, all right. So I'm going to go back to our classroom setting from last week. So last week, I feel like, I think that I got on well with my students. That, that's how I feel. I don't know if you guys got on well with me. I hope you did. All right. So I got on well with, so I got on well with my students. So because, you know, we talked a lot. I think we had a lot of good discussions in class. We talked a lot and we made some jokes. Yeah. So I think that I got on pretty well with my students. So remember, be careful of the verbs. Remember, so in, sorry, I don't know what I'm saying, but so even though it's present tense here, I'm talking about something from last week. So I'm going to put it in the past tense. So just be aware of the verbs that are in these idioms. Idioms, you usually don't change them or the meaning changes, but 
you can change the tense of the verb and the meaning does not change. Just to be clear. Okay, let's go on to number three. Okay. To hit it off with someone. Okay. To hit it off with someone. Okay, so what does to hit it off with someone means? Basically, it means to quickly become good friends with someone. So going back to these guys, you know, they're having a good time. Man, like you're so fun to talk to, to talk with. So they are really hitting it off. You know, they're really getting on well. So typically this kind of starts close to the beginning of a relationship with someone. Um, let me think of a good example sentence. Okay. So when, let's see, mm, yeah. When I met my husband, when I met my husband, he wasn't my husband back then, uh, 11 years ago, so this is a long time ago, we really hit it off. We really hit it off. So, you know, we became good friends very quickly. We had similar interests. We joked a lot and we hung out a lot. So my husband and I, we hit it off pretty good at the start of our relationship. Okay, so let's take a little quick break from going over idioms. And I want to ask you guys a couple of questions. So, let's see, um, so here's my first question for you, who do you get on well with? This doesn't have to be a new friend, it can be an old friend, a family member, anybody. Who do you get on well with? I would like you to please type out an answer to this question if you are watching the class live. If you're watching this as a recording, I still want you to try and make an example sentence, okay? You can write it down or you can practice speaking out loud. So I'll give you an example. I get on well with blank. And then you're gonna put the person's name. So for example, I get on well with my older sister or I get well on, I get on well with my coworker Alan. Um, so those are some examples. So if you're here in class, again, please type out an answer for me. So that's number one. And I'm going to ask you guys another question related to idioms. It's going to be related to hit it off. Okay. Number two. Who did you hit it off with when you first met a friend? Okay, this might be kind of a funnily, funny worded question, but so the first time when you met someone, who did you hit it off with? Have you had this experience before? If you have, please type in the comments below. For me, back in university, so back in university, I'm gonna put uni for short, I hit it off with my best friend, or one of my best friends, Alex. So she was in one of my classes and like, no, she was in two of my classes. Suddenly I like, we kind of got to know each other. We had many things in common and like we got on really, really well. Yeah. Okay. So, oof, I am really sorry, but I think I'm going to have to pop off to use the washroom really quickly. So in the meantime, if you haven't already, 
please try and make some example sentences for number one and number two, okay? I'll be right back as quickly as possible. My apologies that I can advance again, guys. Apologies, guys. I just had to duck out for a quick second. Thank you for your patience and thank you for waiting. All right, I don't see anyone typing up uh, example sentences. Hopefully, those of you at home who are watching quietly are writing up or saying some example sentences out loud, though. Okay, let's move on, guys. We are going to hop off to Number four, to go back years. Okay. Well, let's do this. And just get rid of all this stuff. Uh, okay. To, to go back years. Okay. So literally, let's take a look at 2000, 1995, 2010, 2015, 2020. Okay, so this is me 
And this is my friend. Her name is Rebecca. And this is me. So my friend and Rebecca and I, we go back years. We go back, we go way back. So we first met each other in, I want to say, 1996. That's when we met and became friends. So we've known each other for a long time. So to go back years means to know someone for a long time. Okay. So my friend Rebecca and I go back years. So that's how you can say the ex they could say a sentence like this. Okay, and let's do number five. So I know I'm kind of going through this quickly. If I'm going too fast, you want me to explain an idiom? Just let me know and I can explain it again, okay? But for now, we're gonna do number five, to strike up. Strike up a relationship. Okay, so this means to begin a friendship. So this is kind of similar to get to know someone. So it's the very beginning of a friendship. So this is two people and they are striking up a relationship. Okay, so let's think of a good example sentence. Let's use a past tense one because this is a funny verb and it's irregular. So the past tense is not going to be striked. It's going to be struck. So, I struck up a relationship, relationship with Rebecca, same friend, Rebecca, back in elementary school, in elementary or primary school. Okay, there we go. I struck up a friendship with Rebecca back in elementary school in 1996. Oh, she is my oldest, she is the oldest friend I have. Okay, and we'll go on to number six. So I'm going to get rid of number four. All right. So number six, to enjoy someone's company. To enjoy someone's company. So that means to like spending time with someone. So it's, it's pretty simple. Um, so let me think of a good example sentence. I always enjoy my husband's company. I always enjoy my husband's company because he always always makes me laugh. Ha ha ha. He's a funny guy. Okay. So these are some more idioms. Now I am going to ask you a few more idiom questions. So hold on to your horses, guys. Okay. Let's get rid of these. All right, so here is my next question for you guys. Question number one. Who do you go back, go back years, go back years with? Who do you go back years with, guys? Who is a friend you've had for a long time? So the way you could answer this is, you could say, I go back years with, you could say friend's name. Now this, try to practice this because this might come up in your oral quiz or even your written quiz. So I would like you to try practicing answering these sentences, okay? So if you're here watching me live, please, please type out an answer to me. Okay, and next question. Number two, whose 
company do you enjoy? Okay, that's getting hard to read. Sorry, I'm going to switch my pen over. Bye-bye, black pen. I just noticed that it's getting a little difficult to read the board. My apologies, guys. Okay, we got a nice new pen. I'm going to write with from now on, I promise. So, you could say, I enjoy. Oh, that's way better. Oh, my goodness. I enjoy something's company. So, you could put your friend's name or like your sister, your mother, it could be anyone. Okay, so I'd like you to try practicing this, okay? So for example, I go back years with my friend Rebecca. And whose company do you enjoy? I enjoy my husband's company because he's a funny guy and he makes me laugh. All right, so Feel free, you, you can still answer these questions. I'm just going to move on to the next idioms. Okay, let's do number eight. Um, to have a lot in common. To have a lot in common. So this means to share a lot of interests with somebody. So this is really simple but maybe this person likes dogs and this person also likes dogs and they just talk about dogs all day long. So basically it means to share a lot, like share similar interests. Um, let me think of an example. I have a lot in common with, I have a lot in common with my older sister. So her and I like similar books. We both try to be, like, we're both pretty funny people, I think. She's funnier than I am, though. And she is very, uh, I'm trying to think of more similar. And we have like similar clothing styles. So my older sister and I have a lot in common. Okay, let's move on. Um, bo -bo 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 -bo. Let's do number 10. I know we're skipping a few. I apologize. So number 10. To keep in touch with someone. So to keep in touch with means to keep in contact. You still talk to them, maybe on Facebook, maybe on the phone. So, for example, I try to keep in, ooh, that's awful, in contact with my friends from Thailand. It's not easy because we live in different time zones and we're both busy, but I try to keep in contact with my friends. I try to talk with them. Give them a Facebook message even. Okay, now we're gonna move on to number 11. Number 11, to lose touch with. So this is the opposite of to keep in contact with. To lose touch with. Okay, so basically you don't hear or from someone or see them any longer. And when it happens, it's kind of sad. Um, so, unfortunately, I've lost touch. So, I've lost touch with some of my friends from Thailand. It happens. Um, so, I've tried to keep in touch with them, but unfortunately, I've lost touch with some of my friends from my time in Thailand. It's sad, but it happens. Okay, so I'm going to do two more idioms, and then we're going to move on to the activity. Sorry, I know I'm blasting through these really quickly. Um, so let's do number 12 and number 13, and that's going to be it for today. Number 12, to drift apart. Okay, so these are some of the sadder idioms and sadder saying expressions. 
to drift apart. So physically, drifting refers to when you're on a boat. So here you are, and maybe you and your friend, you know, you're very close, you're good friends, but you know, over time, unfortunately, the waves, the current carries you away and you drift apart. So you're not super close anymore. So now you're all the way over here. Like you've just, so this is what it means to drift apart. You just, you lose touch with each other and you become less close with someone. So I'm going to say, I feel sad that I have drifted apart from those friends. So I'm talking about my friends back in Thailand, from those friends. Okay, so think of these two sentences as going together. Unfortunately, I've lost touch with some of my friends from Thailand. I feel sad that I have drifted apart from those friends. Has this ever happened to you guys? Have you ever lost touch with some friends and then drifted apart? Has this happened to you? If this has happened, you can let me know in the comments. It's a sad thing, but unfortunately, that's life. We lose touch with people sometimes. Okay, last one. And this is probably the most difficult thing that can happen in a friendship. To fall out with someone. To fall out with someone. So basically this means to have a disagreement, to have an argument, and you stop being friends. So, I don't know, for whatever reason, you and your friend, you're upset, you're angry, you're having an argument, you're not happy, and then because of this argument, you are not friends anymore. So, you don't talk to each other. And that can be a very difficult thing to deal with. I think I've had it happen to me once. Yeah, so this, yeah, so let me think of a good example sentence. I will do a past tense one. I fell out with my friend three years ago, but we made up. Okay, so to make up, that's another idiom. So if you make up with someone, that means you go back to being friends. And you're like, okay, we're friends again. Let's not fight anymore. Have you guys ever fallen out with a friend before or with a family member? Has this ever happened to you? If it has, let me know in the comments. You can type out, yes, I have fallen out with my friend before. And maybe, did you guys make up? So I'm going to write that down. To make up with someone. So this means to become friends again after an argument. So after you have a falling out, hopefully you make up again. Hopefully. Okay, guys, so I think that's going to be it for the idioms today. Again, if you have any questions, you can let me know before the end of class. But <coughs> I would like to, <coughs> for the last 20 minutes of class, do this activity called the stages of life. So this should be a fun activity, I think. Hopefully you think so too. So we're going to talk about different parts of our lives, different ages. Let's get rid of this. No more drifting apart. And get rid of all that. Okay, that's better. And <coughs> stages of life. Okay, 
So stages, that's similar to like levels. So, you know, a stage, you have the baby stage where you're a baby. You have the kid stage where you're a kid or a child. The teenager stage, the adult stage, the senior stage. Okay, so let's do number one together. So this is going to be a nice little vocabulary building exercise. So we got nine different stages and we have to match it up with the correct age. Okay, so number one, we have a child. Okay, remember we're using, uh, in, we're using indefinite articles because we're talking about not just, just kind of any child. Number two, a baby. Number three, a toddler. This could be a new word for you guys. Number four, in your 20s. In your 20s. Number five, in your 30s. That's me. Ha ha ha. Number six. Hold on. Oh, I totally mixed this up. I'm so sorry. I did this wrong. Baby and adult. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, number three is an adult. Okay, notice an adult. We use an because there's an a. Number four, a toddler. Number five, in your... I'm just going to put like this, I'm just going to do this for short, in your 20s, number six, in your 30s, number seven, middle-aged. This is what we all fear, I guess. Number eight, retired. Or we could say a senior. This is what we typically say more often, I think. And number nine, a teenager, the favorite time of our lives, not. Okay, so we have to match these up to the appropriate age groups. All right, so child, let's see. So A, we have zero to one. B, one to two years old. C, 13 to 17 years old. D, 18 plus, E, 2 to 12 years old, F, 20 to 30, G, 30 to 40, H, 40 to 75, and I, 60 or 65 or older. Okay, so we want to match these up with the correct numbers. You guys ready to do this? Okay, if you're watching live, I want you to please play along, okay? So, number one, a child. So, what age range is a child? Zero to one? One to two? Thirteen to seventeen? What do you guys think? So, please type in your answers now. If you're watching this as a recording, please still try to do this activity together, okay? All right, so let's see. I'm going to let you guys go ahead and answer the question while I drink water. Okay. So, number one, a child. Okay, somebody said 2 to 12 years old. That's correct. Yeah, it is E, a child. Oop, just draw a letter there. I'm just going to put E in brackets. So, yeah, so a child is 2 to 12 years old. And a baby, this should be pretty easy, I think. Baby, the youngest stage of the human life. How old is a baby? What age range is a baby? What do you guys think? Any guesses? Any thoughts? Don't be afraid to answer. All right, okay, I see somebody has answered. Very good, zero to one years old, yes. Zero to one, letter A. Number three, an adult. An adult. What do we consider an adult? Now, this might vary between countries. For example, I know in Japan, 
once you're 20 years or older, I think that's when you're considered an adult. Here it's a little different. What do you think? What age do you become an adult? Any guesses? Definitely not one to two. Probably not 13 to 17. That's pretty young. That's a different category. 18 or older. That looks promising. 20 to 30. Yeah, you're already an adult. Okay, somebody said 18 plus and that is correct. Good. 18 plus D. So in Canada, once you are 18 or older, you are considered an adult. Okay. Four, a toddler. Okay. Do you guys know what a toddler is? This might be a new word for you. So it's a life stage. So it's very, it's, they're young, they're really young, and they kind of walk like this. Like maybe they can't walk very well, but they're trying and they can speak a little. So how old do you think a toddler is? What do you guys think? Throw in your guesses now. Okay, somebody said one to two. Good, yes. A toddler is one to two years old. That is correct. Toddlers are very cute. They're fun to be with. Okay, in your 20s, I think this speaks for itself, but what do you guys think the answer is? In your 20s. And we have someone saying the letter F is the answer, 20 to 30. Absolutely correct, very good. <laughs> like I said, pretty obvious. Again, in your 30s, another easy one. What do you guys think it is? What letter, which numbers? When are you in your 30s? And someone has answered 30 to 40, excellent. So that's letter G. Once again, pretty basic, okay. Now is here is where it's gonna get a little trickier, maybe or maybe not. Middle-aged, okay. So we've got our like baby, our young years, then we have our middle age, and then we are get older. So what do you think middle-aged is? We got 13 to 17, hmm, not sure about that. 40 to 75, okay, maybe. 60 or 65 years or older. That seems pretty old, but what do you guys think? Any thoughts? Okay, somebody has said 40 to 75. Good, yes. 40 to 75 years old is considered middle-aged. Okay, two left, guys. Retired or a senior citizen. Is it going to be 13 to 17 years old or 60 to 65 years or older? This should be fairly obvious. You're not working anymore. Um, you're going to be, yes, good. So a senior tends to be 60 to 65 years old. So that means a teenager obviously is going to be 13 to 17 years old. All right, so these are the different ways we can talk about the human stages of life. Okay, guys, hopefully you learned a few new terms from this. Now, I'm going to erase this, and let's do the questions here. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of all this mess, woohoo! Okay. Alrighty, let's do this. Number one, Katie is 27. So she's still blank. Okay, so we are going to complete the sentences with the vocabulary from here. A child, a toddler, a teenager, middle-aged, in her 20s, 30s, okay? So, Kate is 27, so she's 27 years old. So that means she's still, she's still what? Obviously, she's not a baby, and she's too young to be retired or a senior. What do you guys think the answer is for number one? 
So I'll let you do that. I'm going to prepare number two as well. Sanjay stopped working last month. He is now blank. And let's prepare number three. Jane is 17. She isn't quite something yet. Okay, so, okay, somebody said in her 20s. Good, nice. So number one, Kate is 27, so she's still in her 20s. Excellent. And notice how we said her. I know it says in your 20s, but we're talking about Kate, a lady. So we're going to say she's in her 20s. So just be careful about this. All right, number two, Sanjay stopped working last month. He is now, he's enjoying the good life. He's not working anymore. Oh, I've worked a long time. I'm finished. So he is what? He's not a younger guy. He's probably an older fella. He is, I'll let you guys finish it off. Number three, Jane is 17. Okay, so she's still a teenager. She isn't quite what yet. Okay, we got retired. Excellent. He is now retired. Something that everyone looks forward to, I'm sure. I have a ways to go before I'm retired. Another 30, 35 years, I think. Okay, so Jane is 17. She's a teenager, but she is not quite something yet. What do you guys think the answer is? She is not quite an... Very good, an adult. She is not quite an adult yet. She is almost an adult. She's close. One more year and she will be an adult. Okay, so let's do number four and number five and number six. Rob is 45, but he still behaves like a young man. He doesn't feel, so Rob is 45. Rob is 45. He doesn't feel, doesn't feel what? So he is 45. He is in something, but he doesn't feel like it. So he acts like he's a young man, but he's actually in his what? What do you guys think? Okay, and I'm going to get number five done. When Jack, Jack had his first girlfriend when he was blank. So he was 15 years old. Okay, so Jack had his first girlfriend. If he was 15 years old, he was, what was he? Was he a child? Probably not a child. A little older than that, right? Okay, so I got an answer for number four. Someone wrote, in his 40s. Excellent. Rob is 45, but he acts like a younger man. He doesn't feel in his 40s. He feels like he's in his 20s or his 30s maybe. That's nice. I wish I felt like I was in my 20s. I definitely feel older. I feel like I'm in my 40s sometimes. <laughs> maybe I need to get a new hobby. Okay, so, and do we have an answer for number five? He was 15, had his first girlfriend. Somebody said teenager, excellent, very good. Don't forget the article, indefinite. He was a teenager, excellent. So 13 to 17 is the teenage years. Number six, okay. Jeff is 38 and his wife is 33. They are both what? They are both in their what? So 38, 33. And let's do number seven. Amy isn't two yet. So Amy isn't two yet. 
She's still what? This could be tricky. Okay, so this one should be easy. This one might be a little tricky. So these guys, they're both in, they're 33, 38 years old. They are both, okay, I see an answer. Thank you. They are both in their 30s. Excellent. Okay, and let's do number eight. I'm going to get rid of number one and number two. And let's just get rid of all these. Number eight, last one. William is 13 now. He is no longer, no longer. So obviously he is a teenager, but he is not, he, before he was a teenager, what was he? What was he before he was a teenager? Okay, so, and how about number seven? So Amy isn't two yet. She is still, okay, I got an answer. She is still a toddler. Good. She is still a toddler. So remember, a toddler is one to two years old, still very young. And Will is 13 now. He's a teenager. He is no longer what? And I see someone said a child. Good. That's right. He is no longer a child. He's a responsible teenager now. Woohoo. Okay, guys, good stuff. So for the last few minutes, let's just do a little discussion. We got a discussion right below. Okay. So let's do question number one. So we're going to do the talking point right here. At what age can you drive legally? What age can you legally drive? Remember the word I taught you yesterday? Illegal. So illegal against the law. However, legal means it's okay. Like it's not against the law, it's fine. So what age can you legally drive in your country? So for me, if you're here, by the way, watching the class, please type out your answer. So in BC, you can legally drive, you can legally drive, at 16 years old. So you can legally drive, or basically I could say when you're a teenager. When you're a teenager. So this is when you can get a learner's license. So that means you have to be driving with somebody else all the time. So you do that maybe for like one year, then you can get a new license where you can drive alone. Okay, so in BC, you can legally drive when you're a teenager at 16 years old. What about your guys' countries or provinces or states? In Canada, in Alberta, you can legally drive when you're 15 years old, so even younger. It depends where you live in Canada. Okay, and let's do number, let's do number two. At what age can you legally work? So I think it's the same in Can. I think it's the same in BC. In BC, you can legally work when you're a teenager or when you're 16 years old. I think 16 is the legal age. It might have changed though. I should look that up. How about in your guys' country? At what age can you legally work? Let me know in the comments. And the last question, let's do number four. So when do most people retire in your country? So for Canada, I'd say in Canada, most, not all, but most people 
retire at 62, 65 years old. So in, uh, in Canada, I believe it's 65. When you become 65, you are what is called a senior. So being a senior can be great because you can get discounts at the store, discounts on public transit. Things get cheaper, which is awesome. So 65, when you become a senior, this is the most common time to retire in Canada. Some people retire earlier though. Some people retire in their 70s. It completely depends on the person. Okay guys, so we are up for time for our second class. We're gonna take a 10 minute break and then we'll come back after class with our listening exercise. We'll see you soon, bye-bye.
now. It's our last class today, almost time for lunch. Maybe you're getting hungry. I'm getting a little bit hungry. Just another 50 minutes to go though. So, like I said, we are going to have a listening exercise. You can see the title behind me here. And it says, friends help you live longer. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Hmm, so tell me guys, do you think this is true? Do you believe this? Do you think friends can really help you live longer? Yes or no? You can tell me in the comments if you're watching this live. What do you think about this title? Do you think this is true? I think it might be true. I've heard that if you have interaction with other people as you grow older, it can help stop you from getting Alzheimer's, which is where you gradually forget everything, including people's faces and people you know. So it's a dangerous disease that eventually does kill you, unfortunately. But if you can have friends and you can talk with them, meet with them, maybe this can prevent you from getting diseases like Alzheimer's. So I believe it. Um, let me know what you guys think though. Okay, so I would like you guys to pull this sheet out here and let's have a little, so let's, let's think of a few questions we should ask. Think of a few questions that we can answer when listening to this. Okay, so friends help you live longer, eh? How do we know this? So let's think of some questions. Hmm. So I'm going to put the questions, I'm going to stick them over here under the new words section. Okay. So. Um, maybe we could ask, why do friends help you live longer? Help you live longer. So why? Why is this? Like, will maybe this listing will tell us why friends help us live longer. What are some other questions you want to know? Do you have any other questions about this? Hmm. What about obvious? Well, probably it's going to be a study. So probably some scientists studied this. So maybe where did this study take place? Where did the study take place? Actually, okay, let's look at number three. I think a better question, number two, which should be up here, or what was the study about? What was the study about? So the researchers obviously had to research something. So what exactly are they researching? Okay, um, what are some other good questions we could think of? Um, who was studied? Who was studied? That's a good question, I think. Okay, so I think those are a few good questions for us to think about while we do the listening exercise. Okay, now I have to apologize. I didn't set up the listening during the break. I completely forgot. Um, I had to talk to some coworkers about something. So I'm just gonna be off screen setting up the listening exercise now. It won't take long, I promise. All righty. Here we go. And I'll just get, oh, I thought there was a listening file. Okay. Okay, so there may not actually be a listening file. I apologize. I thought there was. I really thought there was. Um, let me double check. If not, I'll read it out. Um, I feel like it's always better to have a different voice doing the listening, just so you get used to listening to different people speak English. But if that's the case, that's okay. 
So what we'll do is I'm going to read out the listening and we're going to let you guys fill in the blanks. Okay, so let's get the blanks figured out. So again, please pull this out. So here's number one. Um, there are four blanks you have to fill in. Number two, um, there are two blanks that you have to fill in. Number three, um, what do we have? Two again, pretty easy. Number four, uh, two blanks again. Number five, two more blanks. Okay, um, so let's start with that. All right, guys, so I'm going to read out the whole reading once. So you can just take some time to listen to the reading. Second time, I want you to try to fill in the blanks though, okay? Are you ready? Here we go in three, two, one. Friends help you live longer. A new health report says that having good friends in your old age helps you live longer. The report also says that having close friends may be more important than having close family ties. Researchers interviewed 1,500 Australians over the age of 70 about their social and family ties. The results suggest that people with close friendships were 22% more likely to live longer. The researchers said this is because of the positive effects on the body of social activity and recreation. The researchers analyzed data from an Australian study which began in 1992. The 10 year long study measured how behavioral, economic, environmental and social factors affected the health of 70 year olds. The senior citizens were monitored annually for four years and then at three yearly intervals. The team found that those with the strongest network of friends were less likely to die by the end of the 10 year period. This was true even when the senior citizen lost a spouse. The message is to keep in touch if you want to live longer. Okay, so that is the reading guys. So did you guys understand that? How was the speed? Was it good or was it too fast or was it too slow? I doubt it was too slow for you guys, but let me know in the comments if it was too fast and I can slow down a little bit if you like. Okay, so now we're going to go through this and I'm going to, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do just the first paragraph. So we're going to do questions one to question five. And I want you guys to try and fill in the blanks and send those answers in to me. Okie doke. And while we're at it, let's see if we can answer some of these questions. Okay. So here we go. Once again, please try to fill in the blanks. Friends help you live longer. A new health report says that having good friends in your old age helps you live longer. The report also says that having close friends may be more important than having close family ties. Researchers interviewed 1,500 Australians over the age of 70s about their social and family ties. The results suggest that people with close friendships were 22% more likely to live longer. The researchers said this is because of the positive effects on the body of social activity and recreation. All right, guys, so now I want you to try to send in the answers from number one to number five to me, please. So let's start with number one. A new health report says that having good friends mm -hmm, mm -hmm, helps you live longer. So what are the four missing words, guys? Mm. All right. What do you guys think the answer is? Don't 
be shy. Get your answers in now. And let's also do number two. The report says that having close friend, uh, the report also says that having, hmm, hmm. Okay, I'm starting to see some answers coming in. So someone said, in your old age. And that is correct. Very good. In your old age. All right. So basically, there is a new report saying, if you can have good friends in your old age, you will probably live longer. Maybe you're going to live to like 95 or like 105. So these guys, they're probably going to live a long time. Okay, so number two. And let's also do number three. The report says that having hmm hmm may be more important than having close hmm hmm. All right, so what do you guys think the answers are? All right, so I'm going to draw a little picture here. draw another picture here while you guys type in your answers. Okay. And all right, so we got an answer for number two, close friends. Absolutely. Very good. So the report also says that having close friends may be more important than having close what? Somebody said family ties. Very good. Excellent. Family ties. Okay. So here we have two close friends. And here we have family ties. So these are two seniors. Maybe they're in their 70s or 80s. So this apparently might be more important than having family ties. So here's an older person maybe with their son and his daughter-in-law and their kids. So they're related. They're not related, but they're good friends. But this might be more important if you want to live longer, apparently. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Okay. Researchers interviewed 1,500 Australians over the age of 70 about their social and family ties. The results, mm hmm, people with close friendships, friendships were 22% more likely to live longer. So what were the two blanks here that are missing, guys? And let's do number five as well. The researcher said this is because of the mm hmm on the body for social activity and recreation. <laughs> All right, guys. Number four, number five is now or never. What are the answers? All right. And even if you are watching this as a recording, I still hope you're writing down the answers. Okay, so we got an answer for number four. They said, suggest that. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> so the results. So there was a study done. Let's see. And oh. Um, where, let's see, we can answer number three, where did the study take place? Where was the study? Where was the study done, guys? What country? So take a look here, you can find which country the study was done in. I see someone has an answer. They said Australia. Good, yeah. So Australia, this is where the study took place. <laughs> and what was the study about? So researchers interviewed 1,500 Australians over the age of 70 about, about what? So what was the study about?
about what, guys? Oh, someone said social and family ties. Good. Social and family ties. So you guys know what ties are, correct? So ties are relationships or bonds. Okay. Oh, and we might be able to answer who was studied. Who? So who did the researcher study? Who was studied? All of these answers should be in the top paragraph. Maybe not number, well, number one might be there. But let's answer number four. Who was studied? Any answers? Any thoughts? Okay, somebody said Australians over the age of 70. Yeah, that's correct. Technically, 1,500 Australians over the age of 70. Over the age of 70. What do we call people who are around this age? We call them seniors. So they interviewed 1,500 senior Australian citizens, basically. Good. Okay. We're going to find out number one later, I think. So let's do number five. Uh, the researcher said this is because... Oh, I forgot to illustrate. Okay. So the results... So basically 1,500 Australians over the age of study, 70 they were studied, results are showing that people with close friendships, um, close friendships, so these guys are 22% more likely to live longer, live longer. So compared to Seniors with maybe no friendships, so lonely seniors. So chances are, if you're a senior with good friendships, you're 22% more likely to live longer. And researchers said this is because of the mm -hmm, on the body of social activity and recreation. What do you think? Okay, so someone wrote out their answer. Do the rest of you guys have it? So the answer is positive effects, the good effects, positive effects. Okay, so what does this mean, positive effects on the body of social activity and recreation? So when you talk with somebody else, it's very good for your brain. Like this is like really good. This is a thumbs up. And also, maybe these guys are going to go for a walk. Maybe they're going to walk together and talk together. And, you know, doing exercise is always good on your body. So if you're exercising your brain and you're exercising your body, you're probably going to live longer. And you're more likely to do this if you have some good friends you can do this with. If you're alone, you might not exercise as much. You're not tough talking to other people. So your health goes down. That's an interesting study. What do you guys think of this? Okay, so we might be able to answer question number one now. Why do friends make you live longer? Why do friends help you live longer? Can you guys answer it? I'm going to erase the board here. But think about what I just explained with, you know, the brain, the body. I'm just going to prepare the board for the last six questions. I believe there are six questions. Number six. Two blanks. Number seven. Two blanks. Number eight. Three blanks. Number nine. Three blanks. Number 10, three blanks. Number 11, well, it's a lot here. And 12, three blanks. Okay, and let's get rid of this. And get 
that third blank in there for number eight. Okay, so not seeing an answer for this one. Why do friends help you live longer? So basically, it's because of the positive effects that social activity and recreation have on your body, have on your body, but social activity. Sorry, I forgot to write that up there. So basically, just like I explained before, the more you talk with people and walk around and spend time with them, the healthier you're going to be, the longer you're going to live. So this is what they found out. This is why people with friends usually live longer. Okay, so now we're going to do all the rest of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm gonna read the second paragraph out. I want you guys to listen as closely as possible and try to write out the blanks, fill in the blanks, sorry. Are you guys ready? So here we go, I'm starting from number six. The researchers analyzed data from an Australian study which began in 1992. The 10 years long study measured how behavioral, economic, environmental, and social factors affected the health of 70 year olds. The senior citizens were monitored annually for four years and then at three year intervals. The team found that those with the strongest network of friends were less likely to die by the end of the 10 year period. This was true even when a senior citizen lost a spouse. The message is to keep in touch if you want to live longer. Okay guys, so let's see if you can fill in those blanks. I would like you to start sending in those answers now, if you could. Let me just get some more water. <sighs> okay, so number six, the researchers, mm hmm, from an Australian study. So what's number six? The researchers got an answer. Okay, someone's chiming in with their answer. The researchers analyzed data. Very good. Analyzed data. Okay, so you know what analyze is? To analyze is to look over carefully. So basically you're looking through the information. Aha, I see. Oh, that's why older people with friends are living longer. Okay. So we got some researchers analyzing data from an Australian study, which began in 1992. All right, so there's a study, and it started in 1992, and it was 10 years long. So the 10-year-long study, hmm, hmm, behavioral, economic, environmental, and social factors, hmm, 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 of 70 year olds. Okay, so see if you can fill in number seven and number eight, guys. So what was number seven? So what did the 10 year long study do? It, any ideas? Last chance? Okay, someone has responded. Very good, thank you. So the 10 year long study measured how behavioral, economic, environmental, and social factors. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, so in this study, so we got different things. We got B for behavioral, E for economic, EN for environmental, and SF for social factors. And we got number eight. Okay, I see someone has answered. Hopefully everyone else at home has their answers down. Affected the health. Very good. Affected the health. All right, 
so here we have a definitive article, a definite article, because we know what we're talking about. Okay, so the health of who? This. So they studied how these factors, behavior, economic, environmental, social factors, how they affected the health of a 70-year-old. Not just one, but many 70-year-olds. So how do these affect their health? The senior citizens were monitored, monitored annually for four years and then at... Hmm, hmm, hmm. What was the answer here, guys? What was this? Any thoughts? Okay, I do have an answer. Hopefully the rest of you guys have your answers at home. It was three-year intervals. Three-year intervals. All right. So basically what they're saying is, so the senior citizens were monitored annually. So every year they were monitored. So every year they were monitored. So they were monitored for these things and then at three yearly intervals. So basically from 1992 until 93, 94, until 96, every year they were monitored. But then afterwards it was at three year intervals. So basically they're monitored again in 1999 and then 2000, 2001, and then again at like 2002. So these are three year intervals. Okay. So every three years they were monitored after that. So maybe just two more times. Okay. The team found that those with the strongest networks of friends were hmm, 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 die by the end of the 10 year period. So what was number 10, guys? Okay, so I'm just gonna erase the top half here. So I'm gonna draw some more pictures to explain this. All right, the team found that those, okay. So I'm gonna draw some more pictures, but please write in the answer for number nine if you can. Okay, so here we go. This is senior number one, senior number two. Okay. And, oh, okay, we got an answer for number 10. Have you guys got an answer? So those with the strongest network of friends were less likely to die. Less likely to die. So what that means is network of friends. So here's senior number one, here's senior number two. These are some of the seniors that were studied. So let's say senior number one has a pretty strong network of friends. And like, so like he knows all these people and so this is a network. It's a connection of people who know one another. He's got a very strong network. Her, on the other hand, maybe she's got like one or two friends, so not as good of a network. So he is less likely to die at the end of this 10 year period. So this study goes from 1992 1992 to 2002. So at the beginning of the study, there were these two seniors, for e just for example. At the end of the 10 year study, he was still alive. At the end of the 10 year study though, she was already dead. So it may quite possibly because she didn't have a strong network of friends. He had a strong network of friends, so he's okay. He lives. Okay guys. Two more to go. Question number 11. This was true even when the senior citizen, hmm, hmm, hmm. So what do you think is the answer? When the senior citizen, so get your answers in now. And number 12 as well. 
The message here is to hmm 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 if you want to live longer. So number 12 is an idiom that we studied in the last class. That's our hint. All right. And we have an answer for number 11. Everyone else got your answer? Maybe, hopefully. Okay. So even when the senior citizen lost a spouse. Okay. So what is a spouse? A spouse is someone you are married to or are living with in a romantic partnership. So let's say he had a spouse and here's his spouse. They're happily living together. But let's say, so this study, you know, it took place 1992 until 2002. Let's say in uh, 1994, Unfortunately, she dies, which is sad. And of course he's sad, but he still has his network of friends. So he's still alive, he's still okay. Now, it's possible, maybe she had a spouse. Maybe she had a spouse, but she still died. So it doesn't matter if you have a spouse or not. And the important thing seems to be how good is your network of friendship. Okay, and the last one, the message is to, what is the answer for number 12? It's an idiom we learned uh, earlier today. See if you can get it. I do have an answer popping up on the screen. Do the rest of you at home have it? Okay, the answer is, da -da -da, keep in touch. So, The message is to keep in touch if you want to live longer. So you remember what keep in touch means, right? To keep in contact, whether it's phone calls or you meet each other. So this guy, he is keeping in contact. So, you know, keep talking to them, keep meeting them, and you are going to live a long life, maybe to 100 years old or more. Who knows? Okay. So that is the reading, guys. Um, looks like we, not the reading, sorry, that is the listening exercise. Doi. All right, so what did you think of that? I think we're going to do a little discussion. We'll do a quick discussion and I'll get rid of the board and we can talk about this. All right. So let's get rid of all this. Where is this all done? Okay. Get rid of all these weird pictures. Okay. Okay, that's better. All right, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions and I'd like you to respond to them, especially if you're watching the class live. All right, so let's do discussion. You don't have the discussion questions with you, so I'm going to write them out for you. Okay, question number one. What did you think about the story? What did you think about the story? Do you think having friends can make you live longer? Can make you live longer? And maybe explain why or why not. Why do you think this way? So what did you think about the story? Do you think having friends can make you live longer? Why or why not? So again, if you're watching live, please type in your answers. So for me, I guess like I said at the beginning of the class, I do think, I think this study does have some truth to it. I think I, I can agree that having friends probably will help you live longer. So it's important to keep moving your body and exercise your mind. And it's so much easier to do that if you're with a friend as opposed to being all by yourself. 
alone. So I think I can believe this study. It's a good study. I liked, I liked reading this. It was fascinating, interesting. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm going to prepare the second discussion question in the meantime. Okay. So second question, do you have a strong network of friends? Of friends. Do you, oops, okay. So the second question, do you have a strong network of friends? Yes or no? If not, would you like to have a stronger network of friends? Stronger network, okay. Do you have a strong network of friends? If not, would you like to have a stronger network? Okay, so if you're here, again, please answer the question. So you could answer the question with something like, yes, I have a strong network of friends. That's fine, but maybe you don't. So you could say, mm, no, I don't have a strong network of friends. Would you like one? You could say, I don't have a strong network of friends, but I would like to have a stronger network of friends. So for example, I, I feel a little bit that way. Like I have a small network of friends. It's not super strong, but maybe I, I do wish I could make it stronger. Maybe that's something I need to work on though. I do spend a lot of time at home alone. I need to be more social. <laughs> okay. So that's number two. How about you guys? Please let me know if you have a strong network of friends or not. All right, and question number three. Oh. When you become a senior, so, you know, when you're like, I don't know, 65 or older, what kinds of activities will you do to stay mentally and physically healthy? Physically healthy. Okay. So when you become older, what kinds of activities will you do to stay mentally and, oops, there goes my paper, physically healthy? What kind of activities will you do to stay healthy? So again, please write your comments below. Um, so I'll give you an example. For me, when I become older, I will try to stay physically healthy by going for walks. I'll try to go for a walk every day. I'll try to get out of the house and go for a walk. Maybe it will be with my husband, maybe it will be with my dog, or maybe it will be alone. I'm not sure, but I'm going to try and go for a walk every day. And while I'm a younger senior, I'd like to try to travel, do some traveling. Could be international or it could be domestic in Canada. I think seeing new places can really help keep your mind fresh and healthy. Um, as for staying mentally healthy, um, I'll definitely try to talk with my husband every day. Um, but I think I will need to make some new friends. So maybe I'll join a club where I can meet people like a book club or I don't know, lawn bowling or something. So I will join some sort of club where I get to meet with and talk to different people. That's how I'm going to try to stay mentally and physically healthy. What about you? 
What's your plan? Let me know in the comments, please. Okay, let's do one more question. Um, actually, maybe we can finish off here. I don't think it's a very good question. So this activity was very short, so that's why I added on some discussion. Uh, there's nothing much else to this activity though. So what I think we will do is maybe we can go back to this activity. So this is the activity we did at, in our lesson before the one we're doing now. So I would like you to please take this sheet out and let's go do, let's do number three. We're going to do number three together and that should take us to the end of today's lesson. Alrighty, so let me erase number three. I don't see anyone responding unfortunately and that makes me sad. Okay. Okay, so Let's take a look. Okay, so let's, we have a fellow here. Look at this man. Look at this nice, handsome hunk of man. Wow. Just kidding. I'm married. <laughs> Maybe you guys think he's handsome though. I don't know. He's not bad looking. His name is Mario. It's a me, a Mario, like Super Mario. So what do we have to do? We have to put the sentences in order. Okay. So, first up, you can see number one is way down here. Number one, Mario, or Mario, whatever his name is, Mario, was born in Rome, Italy. Okay, so that's number one. Now, we have to look for the second sentence. So, first he was born, then what? So, here we go, number one, Mario was born in Rome, Italy. So what's going to be the second event? What's number two? He graduated from university and got a job in London? Uh-uh. No, babies don't go straight to university. Something else would have had to happen. What do you think? What is going to be next? So first he was born, so he's a baby. After you're a baby, you become a, remember this word? T -t 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 toddler. So let's see if there's anything about him being a toddler. Okay, let's see. And some, oh, somebody said he grew up. Good, yeah. So he grew up. So he grew up, so pay attention to these words here in bold. He grew up uh, in Milan because his family moved there when he was a toddler. So he moved from Rome to Milan when he was a toddler. So he's a baby, then he grew up. So he might be a teenager or an adult now. So number three, what's next? Let's see. He, what's, what's going to be next? He's probably a teenager or just became an adult. So I, there's a few things mentioning university, a couple of sentences, maybe one of those. What do you think? So type in your answers now. Oh, I got an answer on the screen. You guys ready? When he was 18. Yeah. When he was 18, he moved to London. He moved to, he moved to London in order to go to university. Go to university. I'm just going to put uni for short. Actually, university. I will write it all out. Okay, so that's number three. And what's next? I think number four will be pretty simple. Okay, I already got an answer for number four. You guys ready? He graduated from university. Good. He graduated from. He graduated from university and got a job in London. Wow, that's nice. He moved to London, England. Great. Okay. 
And what's next, guys? What's going to happen? So he's in London. He's doing his job. What do you think? Okay, I think I found the answer. Do you guys have an answer? Oh, okay, I see someone has written their own answer. You guys at home ready for this? Um, he met Susan. Very good. So he met Susan, a nice, lovely lady. Maybe she's from London herself. And they started to go out. That also means to date. So to go out or to date means you start seeing someone romantically. So they started to go out. They started to date. Okay. Let's see, what else? Number six, what's next? Number six, and then, so he's in, oh yeah, he's 25. Sorry, so he's 25 years old. So he met this lovely lady called Susan. They start to go out. And then what do you think happens? Any thoughts? It's not a happy thing, I'll give you a hint. Oh, okay, someone wrote an answer. You guys ready for the answer? The answer is they broke up. Aw, dun dun dun. They broke up two years later. Two years. So you know what break up means? So to break up means you're no longer in love or you separate. So that's a that's a heart. So, okay, okay, it's not working out. Like, I think it's time to break up. Goodbye. That's breaking up. So, you are no longer together. But, okay, what's next, guys? Part seven of Mario's life. What do you think happened? So, they broke up. Well, not two years old, two years later, sorry. Two years later. And, oh, somebody's written an answer. Oh, yes, very good. They got back together. They got back together. Got back together. So this means, you know, when you separate, okay, goodbye, then sometimes, you get back together and you're in love again. So they got back together and they fell in love and then they got married. So they get married. Oh, that's nice. So kind of things are going very well for them. And that's not the end of their story though. Number eight, what happens? Any answers? Okay, I see an answer on the screen. Um, I think I'm trying to find the answer. Oh, here we go. So two years later, in their mid-30s. So in their mid-30s, so like 35, 36, they had a baby. Oh, that's sweet. They had a baby. Okay, very good. And there's one more left, one unfortunate ending. Oh dear, what happens? <laughs> this is the only one left. Okay, I have an answer on the screen. You guys at home ready for the sad ending? Sadly, they got divorced. They got divorced in their late 30s. All right, do you know what divorced is? So it's similar to break up. Break up, however, is with a boyfriend and a girlfriend or boyfriend, boyfriend, girlfriend, girlfriend, whatever your orientation is. To get divorced is after marriage. So you get married and when you get divorced, you are no longer married. You are separated. So yeah, get divorced. Kind of a sad thing. It does happen though. So let's take a look at Mario's life. So he grew up in Italy and then he found a lovely lady, broke up with her, but then they get back together, get married, 
and then they have a baby, and they separate. So it just wasn't meant to be, it seems. Poor old Mario. Will he ever find the true love of his life? Okay, guys, so it is now the end of the lesson. Thank you so much for joining in today. I will be here again tomorrow at 9 o'clock to teach you again. So we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.